In our previous lectures, we learned how to find the space complexity of recursive algorithms. Now we are ready to solve some problems based on space complexity of recursive algorithms. So let's proceed and let's solve the problem number one on space complexity of recursive algorithms. Here is the problem. What is the space complexity of the following algorithm? This is the algorithm written in C like syntax. Our job is to find the space complexity of this algorithm. How do we find the space complexity? We learned in our previous lectures how to find the space complexity. So let's dive into the solution straight away. In order to find the space complexity, we need to know the space required to store the data structures used in the algorithm plus the depth of recursion of the algorithm. In this algorithm, we are not using any complex data structure. We are using the simple variable n, which will take constant amount of memory space. Hence, it will not contribute much to the space complexity. So, we are left with depth of recursion. Clearly, in order to find the space complexity of this algorithm, we need to find the depth of recursion of this algorithm. In order to find the depth of recursion, we need to know the flow of function calls of this algorithm. We can observe in this algorithm, the function f is calling itself. So clearly this is the recursive algorithm. We learned how to find the space complexity of recursive algorithm. The space complexity of this algorithm is same as the depth of recursion. But we need to represent depth of recursion in asymptotic notation. That we will do at the end. Now let's proceed and let's find the depth of recursion or the depth of function calls of this algorithm. We need to start with fn. So let's call fn. I am not taking an example here. I will solve this problem in a generalized fashion. So I am not putting any n value here. Instead, I am calling f of n. Now f of n is called and within this function, we can observe we have this base case. Let's assume at this moment n is not equal to 1 so that the else block will be executed. Within the else block, we have this statement return fn by 2 plus 1. So from fn, we now need to call fn by 2. Please note that we do not have to worry about whether we have additions here or multiplications or any other operation. We are only interested in the depth of recursion or depth of function calls. Hence, we are interested in knowing the flow of the function calls. So, from fn, we need to call fn by 2 and that should be our focus. So, from fn, we now need to shift our attention to fn by 2. Now, fn by 2 is called. This means n must be replaced by n by 2. Let us assume that this base case is still not satisfied, hence the else block will be executed. And in this else block, we have this return statement. Again, we need to call fn by 2, but this time n is n by 2. So we need to replace this n by n by 2, and therefore we will get n by 2 square. So from fn by 2, we now need to call fn by 2 square. So at this moment, we are at fn by 2 square. Let us assume this condition is still not satisfied and we will proceed to the else block. Then fn by 2 will be called once again, but this time n is n by 2 square. So it will be replaced by n by 2 square and we will get n by 2 cube. So from fn by 2 square, we will move to fn by 2 cube and this will proceed, let's say, up to fn by 2 power k. We have fn by 2 power 0 here, then we have fn by 2 power 1, then fn by 2 power 2, and this will proceed, let's say, up to fn by 2 power k. As we can observe a pattern here, every time we have something to the power of 2. Here we have n by 2 power 0, here we have n by 2 power 1, here we have n by 2 power 2. So let's assume the last function call is fn by 2 power k. Let us assume this is the last function call 
and at this moment we can observe we have n by 2 power k within the function. Now what do you think what is the depth of this recursion? We can see that the depth of this recursion is same as the number of function calls. We have n by 2 power 0 in the first function call. This means the power of 2 is 0 in the first function call. In the second function call, the power of 2 is 1. In the third function call, we have power of 2 as 2. So it is clear that the power of 2 is always 1 less than the specific function call number. Here we have power of 2 as k. So this must be k plus 1th function call. Hence, the depth of this recursion is k plus 1. As we have a total of k plus 1 function calls, the depth of this recursion is k plus 1. But please remember that for every recursion, it is not always true that the number of function calls is same as the depth of recursion. For this specific algorithm, we can observe that the depth of recursion is same as the depth of function calls as the flow of function calls is linear. From every function call, there is only one function call and hence the flow is linear. For these type of recursive algorithms, where the flow of function calls is linear, the depth depends on the number of function calls. Here we have a total of k plus 1 function calls, hence the depth of this recursion is k plus 1. So now we know what's the depth, but we need to represent depth in terms of the input size which is n, not k. So we need to find the value of k in terms of n. How do we do that? Just observe the last function call. Here we have f of n by 2 power k. Here we can observe the value of n is n by 2 power k. And I'm assuming this is the last function call. Therefore, the base case must be satisfied. And we know n is n by 2 power k. So, if this base case is satisfied, then n by 2 power k must be equal to 1. So, it is clear that n by 2 power k is equal to 1. Now, we can solve this equation to find the value of k. Let's multiply both sides by 2 power k. We will get n equal to 2 power k. Now, we have n as 2 power k and we have k in the power of 2. We are interested in finding the value of k. This means we need to bring this k to the base. Hence, we need to take log on both sides. This is what we learned. In order to bring k to the base, we need to take log on both sides. Let's apply log base 2 on both sides because we have the constant 2 here. After taking log base 2 on both sides, we will get log n base 2 equal to log 2 power k base 2. Here we can observe the form of logarithm is log a power b base c. We can rewrite this as c times log a base b. This is one of the properties of logarithm. Now, this means we will get k times log 2 base 2. What is log 2 base 2? Log 2 base 2 is 1 and 1 times k is k. Therefore, we are left with k in the right hand side. Now we have log n base 2 equal to k or we can say k is equal to log n base 2. Now we got k in terms of n. So let's replace k by log n base 2 here. And now we have the depth of recursion as log n base 2 plus 1. We can eliminate the constant and we can eliminate the base. So we will get the space complexity as theta of log n. We know space complexity is theta of depth of recursion. We cannot write depth of recursion as it is. We need to represent it in terms of asymptotic notation. And hence, we are writing this space complexity as theta of log n. So, the space complexity of this algorithm is theta of log n. We are done with this problem. And this means we are done with this presentation. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.